several things that we must uh, take into account. Uh, first and foremost, um, you have to decide whether or not you have the ideal sort of life to actually own a dog. Uh, then you've got to decide what kind of dog is suited to your lifestyle. Because uh, generally speaking, I find that most people have dogs that are not necessarily suited to their lifestyle, but they're dogs that they fancy having. Um, and it's not always the case that the two merge or um, are even compatible. Um, thereafter, you start looking at dogs, their temperaments, the different temperaments of dogs, the historical backgrounds of these, of these dogs. Um, some larger dogs need a lot of space. They're not attuned to being kept in small kennels. Uh, such as we tend to see quite a lot of uh, these uh, kennels that I tend to call chicken coops. Dogs are not attuned to be kept like that. Dogs are actually uh, uh, they're actually wandering animals. They like to have space to wander around. They like to protect large territories, um, and it is uh, it is a form of, of of cruelty, in my opinion that a dog should be locked up in a kennel uh, for 20 or so hours of the day, except when it's either breeding or perhaps when it has minimal exercise um, or for whatever other means it is, it, is, it is let out. I mean, this idea of letting dogs out at 11 o'clock at night and putting them back at 5 a.m. in the morning, um, and then people consider that those dogs may very well end up as guard dogs. It's a fallacious notion. Um, dogs have to be trained to do guard duties. Um, some dogs will guard instinctively, but they will only guard instinctively as, so long as there is no real serious palpable threat. Um, so, having decided that you want a, that you are um, desirous and that you are, you are ready to have a dog, uh, then you must go to um, a breeder. Now, I there are two words that I use with caution when it comes to um, breeders. One is established and the other one is reputable. Um, an established breeder, of course, is someone who has been not only in the business for a very long time, but is somebody who has a track record of distinguished um, service to the industry. Somebody who will uh, answer all your questions. Somebody who will not, who will tell you the flaws, because all dogs have flaws, and. Uh, a good breeder, or so I said, established breeder, is somebody who's not afraid to tell you those flaws. He's not. He's, he's also somebody who's not afraid to ask you questions. He'll ask you a lot of questions, whether or not you are also suited to the breed that you want, and whether or not he actually wants to allow his dog, to his puppy, to go to to you. Now, having all that said and done. Um, we now get to the situation where you want to teach a dog to be a responsible uh, citizen of the community. Uh, for that to happen, you, right at the beginning, you don't really necessarily need the um, services of a trainer. I mean, little simple things that you could do with your dog. Um, you know, you make uh, the idea of getting a dog to like you, to follow you around, to come to you when he's called, you know, attractive with tidbits. Um, you know, you use a nice, pleasurable tone. You know, I hear a lot of people, you know, you barking and using very harsh tones at young, young dogs. Well, young dogs, when they are, when you use those sort of tones on them, they actually, they actually tend to uh, clamp up 
rather than um, become extroverts. They tend to they tend to clam up, and uh, and 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 you know they they don't particularly want to be in your in your company because they're afraid of you. But if you use a nice high tone to a puppy, it, it sees it as something quite joyful, and they tend to uh, they tend to respond to to to, to high pitched tones. Um, as of course the puppy gets older, um, and it's true. Uh, attributes, the the the, the um, assigned traits of that breed begin to show up. You may well find that uh, a, a Doberman or a Bauble or a Rottweiler, a German Shepherd, uh, a Caucasian, Ridgeback, you know, those sort of dogs. You could very well find that you know, the dogs begin to grow a little bit older and they begin to test the boundaries. Uh, it is at this point that if you are not a capable trainer yourself, you need to start engaging the services of somebody who will come and assist you to train you to train your dog. The idea of a dog trainer uh, coming to your house, either when you're sleeping or when you've gone off to work or when you've traveled, is a completely nonsensical one. It doesn't make sense at all. Because the idea uh, is that your dog trainer is training you to train your dog. And in any event, it is uh, all, do all dog training is owner participation based. In other words, you must, be, you must be present when the dog trainer is showing you how to train your dog or when he's even handling your dog. In a training setting, um, you want to remain the alpha to your dog. Uh, otherwise, what will happen is this: you will, uh, the dog trainer will come. He will demonstrate all the commands he's taught the dog. The dog will um, will listen and more than likely execute all those commands. He will go off. You will come with your, you know, multi-prized champion whatever it is um, and start trying to trying to mimic the the, the moves of, of, a, of a dog trainer and a puppy that's reached the age of six or seven months um, may take exception to the fact that you're bossing him or pushing him around um, luckily for you he's probably not at the age where he's going to do a lot of damage but you know, if if push comes to shove, he he may still rebel, and he may not like it. Um, and in any case, you're not going to get the best out of that dog. So the idea is that your dog trainer comes to you. He helps you to learn how to train your dog. And you then become one with your dog in sync with one another. Um, and this is one of the things that people tend not to understand uh, in our community. Um, people call, that call themselves dog trainers think there is some, something of a, there is something of a profession where you know you, it's like a you know, driver coming to wash a car in the morning. Um, and the owner doesn't know when he's washed it and you know and, and how well he's washed the car. All he knows is that he gets into a wash car in the morning. Well, a dog is a little bit different to that. Um, it's a live animal. It has its own perceptions, uh, its own behavioral pattern, and it may not necessarily uh, follow your own script. Um, animals sometimes have a mind of their own. So you get a trainer who comes to train your dog. Um, I, all too often I hear people saying that they want to train dogs. I mean, my inbox is full of, uh, of, of, of messages from people who want to train their dogs to be, so to speak, aggressive. I, I, sometimes I worry when people write me and say that they want their dogs to be aggressive, that it's too friendly and whatever it is. And then I ask them how old the dog is, and they tell me the dog is five, five or six months old. Now, a five or six month old dog is like a two and a half year old child. You wouldn't expect a two and a half year old child to get in the boxing ring 
um, or to defend or to protect your house from intruders. Um, whilst you know, a six-month-old dog really doesn't have the, it doesn't even have the threat perception. Neither does it have. Well, most of them don't anyway. I mean, we 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 tend to test our dogs very early. Uh, then we breed for these things. We select. We selectively breed for for some of these things because, you know, I'm an old working dog man. Um, yeah, and so you know, so then then you, but but the the, the fact is this. Um, all of training is based on control. In every type of training that you put your dog through, control is the, it's the principle number one, which means that at every point in training, you must be able to control your dog. Um, even in this so-called you know, attack work, it is, it, is, it, is, it is control. It's control work, because after all, if you teach your dog how to attack a human being and the dog, for whatever reason, goes after the wrong person, you have to be able to stop the dog. If you can't stop the dog from the attack, not only will you end up in court, um, you could actually, the, the dog could, could, could kill someone, um, you know, and, and it could be, become a very nasty situation that you have on your hands. So it's, it's very important that you should understand what you're letting yourself into when you start asking people, um, most of whom um, really and honestly, in all honesty, have absolutely no business training dogs for that kind of pursuit anyway. So, here we go. You start with obedience. Obedience is very important because um, dogs should be uh, biddable. They should be tractable. They should be... Um, you should be able to you know, uh, give dogs instructions that they must be able to obey them. The dog must be willing to obey those instructions. They must have an aptitude which is, um, which is solid enough um, to, 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 to be able to accept uh, and assimilate and then, of course, you know, uh, digest uh, the, the, the training. Your training must be consistent. What you do today must be what you do tomorrow. For the same commands, you must use the same words and the same execution. Um, you know, try to we try to limit it to monosyllables. Um, when you when you when you say to a dog uh, something like uh, "sit down," those are two commands. "Sit" is a command. "Down" is a command. So when you say to a dog "sit down," then of course you are confusing the dog. So you know, many people when they want to show boat, they start giving the dogs plenty of commands and telling them all sorts of rubbish. The dogs don't understand anything of what they're talking about because dogs are not tuned like that. Dogs do not understand human language um, the way we see it anyway. Uh, they may be able to pick up certain tones and uh, certain certain words. It's possible that dogs are able to pick up certain words that are used you know, regularly and so on and so forth, but, but not in not in the manner in which I hear people using them. Praise, praise is very important. At the execution of every command, a dog must um, must be praised if it does it properly. If a dog will willfully refuses to execute a command which you know, the dog knows but is stubbornly refusing to execute it. Whatever you do, do not lose your temper. I've seen far too many people who call themselves dog trainers lose their temper with their dogs. And when you lose your temper with the dog, you are telling, you're, you're teaching the dog that actually if you don't get your way, then there's another way which is to use aggression and violence and everything. So you must never lose your temper. Actually, if you lose your temper with the dog, the dog shuts down anyway, and you, you you ruin the training. So always be always try and be joyful in your training, even if it takes a dog a little bit longer to learn, even if they're siblings and they turn where well, it takes one a little bit longer to learn than another dog. Don't see that as a as a means, uh, as a reason. Don't see that as a reason to 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 to, um, to punish the dog. Uh, like in children, 
like in humans, in, 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 in adults. We don't all have the same aptitude, and neither will dogs have the same aptitude. So, remember, obedience is very important. Obedience is, uh, I mean, thorough and implicit obedience is very, very important in dogs. You know, I mean, I can take my dogs out, both of them, together, off leash, in anywhere, anywhere, in any part of Lagos, in any part of the world, frankly, beach, you know, wherever I go. And they must behave themselves. They must be good with, um, and I know this is a word that uh, is overflogged, the word socialization. Uh, the word socialization, of course, you've guessed it already, uh, simply means socializing your dog, or to socializing your dog, making it social, which means that making it, you know, responsible within its environment. Um, the dog must be uh, nice and decent with other dogs. The dog must be accepting of uh, noises and uh, obstacles and uh, you know machinery the sort of thing I mean you, you you don't really want a dog that's you know lying on the floor being dragged around because it's seen a lorry coming by so you know you take your dog and you expose the dog to as many different situations as possible um, you try and socialize them with other dogs so that they, they they have a good disposition towards other dogs it's very important otherwise you'll be set you'll be settling fights you know, all, all the time, especially with these big dogs. Um, so you socialize your dogs. It's, it's, it's quite important that you do that. Um, teach them to ignore other dogs when they go outside. Uh, they must be approachable, and where your dog is not approachable for any reason, you must tell people. So that, you know, there's, no, there's, nothing, there's nothing big in allowing somebody, and, and, you know, somebody comes up to you and says, oh, you know, uh, your dog is it nice you say yes when you know the dog is not nice but you say yes and the person gets bitten and it ruins the day for everybody because that person has to go to the hospital they worry about their jabs they worry about the health of your dog you worry about the health of the person and all together it becomes a horrible triangle of 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 of, of grief and 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 worry and, and and anxiety so you really don't need that um and then, of course, once you know that you've got a dog that is reasonably um, obedient and is reasonably well socialized, uh, you can go on to advanced training. Advanced training is something that I, I tend to be a little bit cautious about, uh, on, so speaking openly uh, with people about, because I, I, I find that a lot of people, uh, Nigerians are very good look learners. In other words, uh, they see you doing something. They don't really understand the theory behind it. Um, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of trainers that are very good at uh, practical things, but actually they don't really fully grasp the um, theory of why dogs do certain things, um, especially when dogs are in heightened states of uh, frustration, stress, uh, and other negative mm -hmm. states of mind. Uh, th these are these are things that you really have to understand before you start taking dogs to greater levels of uh, training. Um, it's so easy to push the dog over the edge, and you know you must be extremely careful that when you have a you know, you become the custodian of that dog. When you've got a dog, I, I'll take the example of um, a large dog, a bobo. A bull or perhaps a Preza Canario, a cane corso. That dog is going to grow to, you know, about sixty kilos, probably more. I mean, I had a dog that was much more than that. Um, now that dog on the rampage, that dog out of control, doesn't take very long for that dog to injure a human being very, very savagely. I've seen a lot of things in my time. I mean, I wrote a paper many years ago, and it must be about two thousand and nine. And, uh, to, and I recorded, you know, dog. Yes, I was uh, saying at the tail end of that, um, the last, the first bit, that I wrote a uh, paper. And that paper was very disturbing because it gave, um, it threw up some very, very um, unexpected results. 
the number of dog attacks, in particular the number of dog attacks on children, and in particular out of that group, the number of attacks on dog ch uh, on the, the number of dog attacks on children within the home. Um, so something terribly wrong there. I mean, of this of the this total number of dog attacks, it was forty fatalities. Um, now forty fatalities is forty fatalities too high, in my opinion. Um, so we uh, we need to bridge the gaps between um, you know be, between you know what we do to these dogs to make them um, uh, um, unlivable with and the things that we do to ensure that they are happy, healthy um, and responsible canine citizens and right in the middle of that mix somewhere is, 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 is the training of the dog. So um, I'm hoping that um, you know we, we, we will all learn from one another. You will take some of some some things from what I've said. Um, likewise I will um, also listen to the complaints that people have. Um, all that remains for me to say, uh, my good friends, is that I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in person. Um, it is for personal reasons that I'm unable to join you. However, uh, it is my wish that you will have a fruitful and an uneventful um, gathering today. Um, or tomorrow, shall I say, and that um, the movement uh, that you have begun will wax stronger um, uh, from year to year, and that we will have a lot more of these seminars and symposia uh, where we can all come, uh, put some of our uh, issues, um, and, and debate them and discuss them um, you know, in, 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 in intelligent interaction and, uh, and uh, public discourse, um, so that we can we can we can grow, and grow exponentially to the point where, you know, Nigeria begins to be taken very seriously again. Um, I wish you a very happy and uh, fruitful deliberations, and once again. I uh, wish I could be there. I can't, but my spirit is there. Um, so this is me, Dapo Jara. Uh, A M B P S C A. Signing out.